We're going to take a look at this article at zmescience.com. It's entitled The Ten Most Amazing Unexplained Artifacts, and it's written by Mihai Andre. Mr. Andre begins. The London Hammer, a tool older than history. In June 1936, Max Hahn and his wife Emma were on a walk when they noticed a rock with wood protruding from its core. They decided to take the oddity home, later cracking it open with a hammer and chisel. Ironically, what they found within seemed to be an, an archaic hammer of sorts. They turned it to a team of archaeologists who checked it, and as it turns out, the rock encasing the hammer was dated to the Ordovician more than 400 million years ago. There is some question regarding that dating, though, but here's the kicker. According to initial measurements, the hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years old. Apparently it's so old that a section of the handle has begun the transformation to coal. Creationists, of course, were all over this, and creationist Carl Bau latched onto the hammer in the 80s, even using it as the basis of speculation of how the atmospheric quality of a pre-flood earth could have encouraged the growth of giants. The hammer had made of more than 96% pure iron, is far more pure than anything nature could have achieved without an assist from human technology, or technology of some race. The Antikythera Mechanism a Greek ancient computer. The Antikythera mechanism has been labeled the first mechanical computer found in a shipwreck or a shipwreck off the Greek island of Antikythera. Buried under 45 meters of water, it was designed to calculate astronomical positions, consisting of a box with dials on the outside and a very complex assembly of gear wheels mounted within. It's about as complex as an 18th century top-notch clock. The level of sophistication utilized by the device has forced scientists to accept that their perceptions of ancient Greek engineering may be faulty. Nothing similar to this exists or is mentioned in any known writings from the period of its creation. Based on the knowledge we do have, this mechanism should not even exist. According to Professor Michael Edmonds, of Cardiff University, who led the team studying the mechanism. This device is just extraordinary, the only thing of its kind. The design is beautiful. The astronomy is exactly right. The way the mechanics are designed just makes your jaw drop. Whoever has done this has done it extremely carefully, and he added, in terms of historic and scarcity value, I have to regard this mechanism as being more valuable than Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Judging by its amazing complexity, it seems fair to assume that the Antikythera has other predecessors, but none has yet been found, which makes it even more impressive. The complexity and workmanship did appear again in Europe until the development of mechanical astronomical clocks in the 14th century. So how did the ancient Greeks, with basically no technology available, manage to build such a complex calculator? The Dropa Stones. In 1938, an expedition led by archaeologist Dr. Ki Pu Tai into the Bayan Karaula in China made an astonishing discovery. Nearby caves held traces of the ancient culture which once occupied them. Buried under thick layers of dust, hundreds of stone disks lay scattered about the cave's interior. There seemed to be nothing spectacular initially, but the disks turned out to be eerily similar to phonograph records. Nine inches in diameter, a circle cut into their centers, with an obvious spiral groove. They are believed to be more than 10,000 years old. But the spiral, as it turns out, is composed of tiny hieroglyphics. 
When studied and translated, it was revealed that the discs tell the amazing story of spacecraft crashing into the mountain, piloted by beings who called themselves the Dropa. At least that's what Sun Um Nui, the Chinese researcher in charge of the Dropa Stones, concluded. While his announcements startled the world at first, he was subsequently, subsequently ridiculed by most of the scientific community, and he went on a self-imposed exile in Japan. Russian researchers requested the disks, the disks for studying, and China, China actually sent a few to Moscow. In the famous Soviet, max, in the famous Soviet magazine Sputnik, a doctor. Vyacheslav Saivez. Yeah, Saizev. Vyacheslav Saizev describes an experiment where the discs were supposedly placed on a special turntable, whereby they were shown to vibrate or hum in an unusual rhythm as though an electric charge was passing through them. However, this research was not continued, or at least it was not made public. Another of the Dropa Stone. As of today, there is no clear information where the Dropa Stones are stored or where modern researchers have concluded about them. They remained one of the most mysterious artifacts in the world. That brings us to the Saqqara bird, an Egyptian plane discovered during the 1898 excavation of a tomb in Saqqara, Egypt. The Saqqara bird is, as you could have guessed, a bird-shaped artifact made from the wood of a sycamore tree, weighing in at just under 40 grams, with a wingspan of more than seven inches. It's been dated back to approximately 200 years before Christ. Lack of documentation and other data has led to some speculation regarding its function. In fact, the ancient Egyptians were well aware of the principles of aviation, but it's not clear how this translated to the artifact itself. So what was its purpose? Was it simply the toy of an affluent Egyptian child? Did it serve some kind of ceremonial purpose? Regardless, the object has few realistic bird traits. With its vertical tail resembling that of an airplane or glider, it resembles no known bird. Egyptian physician, archaeologist, and parapsychologist Khalil Messia has speculated that the ancient Egyptians developed the first aircraft. Other scientists have come to a conclusion that it would not be effective as an aircraft due to a lack of technology, but it could have been, in fact, a glider. Well, let's check out the Baghdad battery, 2,000-year-old battery. This device consists of a five and a half inch high clay vessel, inside of which was a copper cylinder held in place by asphalt. Within the cylinder, archeologists found an oxidized iron rod. In 1940, Wilhelm Koenig, the German director of the National Museum of Iraq, suggested that these could be galvanic cells, perhaps used for electroplating gold onto silver objects. Nobody has been able to prove him wrong, especially since it only needed to be filled with an acid or alkaline substance to produce an electrical charge. The Baghdad battery would not have been very effective as a battery, but there's a chance it could have worked. Elizabeth Stone, an archaeologist at Stony Brook University, says modern archaeologists do not believe the object was a battery, but instead simply a storage vessel. Yeah, a place to store a copper tube, and inside that, an iron rod. 